Uh, so welcome, good afternoon. This is the uh, 19th uh, Big Picture uh, webinar and we delve into a, an engagement theme. Uh, so if you're watching the recording, do have a look at the others. Today I've got with me Suzanne Evans and Chris Scott, uh, who, who I both know and we, we've all got a passion for engagement. And today, particularly, we're looking at switching on the training room. So that is one of our acts within our art of people development courses that we run uh, we split our people development into training uh, induction and performance and switching on the training and uh, room is really important because sometimes i think when we go into the training room we have to be aware of the mindset that our learners are in and we need to do everything we can to make it as engaging and interesting for them uh, as we can and we'll, what we'll do is I like to structure this and because there's just the three of us there's a bit of time to natter and we will finish promptly at half past I'll just do a few uh, pre-flight checks so you're obviously in zoom and look comfortable and happy it looks like you've both used it before mm -hmm. uh, you know I think there's a few people at the moment using zoom for the first time and kind of looking around and seeing which buttons they can press but I think you two look like you've used it before um so if you need to say anything or do just interrupt me or put your hand up or whatever or just jump in um what i'll do is i'll share some related experience and then we'll go into a little practical in the time just to demonstrate my insights and experience if you've got the two things i sent over you've got the prop which is the paper prop um if you've printed it have you both printed ah fantastic i love a way at this point sorry that's all right, Chris. You know the board. I know what it well, looks like. <laughs> so you could use the uh, just piece of paper. The second thing okay. is I sent on your email earlier a little attachment which looks like a cue card. Yeah, I've got that. I have printed it. Brilliant. It's the first time we've incorporated that into the webinar format. So let me share my ex related experience. And just whilst I'm doing so, um, have a little think about the cue card that I've sent you and in the practical I'm going to play the employee and what I'm going to ask you to do is make some connections if you can between the training I've asked you to provide and me as the learner and I'll share some things on screen to help you with that so it's very much a two-way dialogue and some ideas I don't know where it heads it just tends to uh, flow based on the prompts that I make so my related experience is this, that around switching on to a uh, training room, often I think expectations are too high. And what I mean by that is that the actual reality of the situation is that learners sometimes come into the room and they don't actually know why they've been sent on the training. And, th and this worries me and I hate that look on people's faces i hate that kind of arm folding i hate that fact that they've got to be there rather than they want to be there and and that worries me and i think expectations of ours are that they'll love the training and go through it but if they come into it with that mindset we're always going to be fighting a losing battle i think the the way we position it at the start uh, we could sometimes do a little bit better instead of just thinking we're going to broadcast material we should often respect and think that we could do more to get them into the right mindset and frame of mind. It's actually about them rather than the content we're giving them. And I think what we'll see, and I can't remember off the top of the head, the two examples I've sent you, what we'll try and do is to flip that around as to what that means for the learner. And the second thing is that in our favor, I think there is an appetite of self-development so i always give people the benefit of the doubt so whilst our expectations are high and i often see it delivered poorly i actually think that we have a chance here because people do want to develop themselves and i think i see that appetite and i think rolling on to the third point it's our responsibility or the responsibility of the trainers to link those things together and actually particularly in the times we're living in is see people coming into the room and actually have we done everything to make this an effective uh use of time for them so we're going to go into a little practical of how we do that with big picture but before i do that just in terms of that introduction because there's a small group of us here 
has that triggered any thoughts or ideas from your own experience of where you've seen that done well or where maybe you could have done something better with a client? I would say um, I definitely think that the people being in a room and not knowing why they're there, I've seen that happening less and less um, over the recent years. I think back when I first started delivering training, it used to happen quite a lot. Um, but I think that's got less and I think it's partly due to I don't know, I think people taking a bit more responsibility for their learning, um, but also I think as a, as a trainer and a facilitator, I would make sure that doesn't happen now by engaging with everyone who comes into the room before I meet them. How would you do that, Suzanne? Just, just one example of how you might do that. So I always make sure I get a list of participants with their email addresses from um, their manager or from the HR person, whoever I'm liaising with. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I drop an email to them all beforehand. And then I would, depending on what it was, I would follow up probably with a telephone call just to nice. make sure that they knew what was happening. And, to, and I, I usually do pre-work as well. So they have to do something to bring with them. So I just make sure that they've done that before they come. Excellent. So you've seen maybe a, a rising watermark, tide mark Definitely. with regard to expectations. That it Definitely. I think because, you know, training is expensive, isn't it? And I think, um, especially using an external trainer, and I think there is just a bit more buy-in now. It still happens. You still get the person who, you know, yeah. at the start of the session, they don't know why they're there. But that is in the minority now, I would say. Yeah, nice. Chris, any reflections from you at this point? Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think if you're talking about... Um, you know kind of uh consultant trainers going into businesses running courses um then i think you know you're dealing with a certain level if you like and and i think two things that suzanne said is susan said is right is one is the expectations probably pretty high because it's not cheap um and also the communication piece is easier to do so if you could set the example of welcome break where i used to work um you know, if you're training managers, supervisors, that sort of level, then actually getting the information to them that you want to get to them prior to them coming along, uh, unsurprisingly to some, but surprisingly to some, is much more difficult. So, you know, you mentioned email addresses. Um, you know, not everybody in Welcome Break has an email address for a start off. So, yeah, a lot of people do, particularly the senior people. So I think... Um, I, in my career, have seen a lot of people come to courses who just were not aware of why they were there. I've seen people come off a shift, literally, and walk into a training room for another eight hours, you know? Yeah. Six hours. So um, I think it can be a problem. But I think there's plenty of things you can do to try and avoid it and stop it from happening. Um, whether yeah. that's, as, as Susan mentioned, you know, the emails or a phone call, I think is a great idea. I think where you can use technology to, to prime people, that's a great idea. So you can get something to them on their phone or, or via an app or even a little video welcome. We, we did a course for my team where the guy sent us all a video welcome, oh. uh, which was personalized. So it was, you know, direct oh. to you. And he recorded all of them for the individual if that makes sense yeah no yeah. that's nice and that's I mean, relevant to the, the, money. <laughs> the, the, the you know, relevant to the e-learning <laughs> stuff that we're chatting about about how you can make that personal but also deliver it using tech yeah. and so, so yeah. talking of tech so thanks for, for those reflections just moving on into practice one one way i've done it and bearing in mind that, that related experience he he is a kind of little scenario <laughs> through that I've used big picture with before just to, to flip the, the thinking and the, the role we're in and your cue cards probably in front of you at this point, because you've got a different one each yeah. um, is that I'm going to play the role of the learner. So I've come into a room and if I share with you this screen, uh, which I'll just bring up now, if I can use my tech correctly, I'm just going to share with you something. And here we are. So you should be able to see uh, a big picture board that I've set up. And you've got different levels of understanding of a big pic. It's been a while, Suzanne, since we kind of mm -hmm. looked at it. Um, I don't know if I need to zoom in a bit or you can actually read that. Do I need to zoom? Could you read the writing on it? Yeah, that's yeah, fine. I can see it. Yeah. Fantastic. So this is me, a learner. We're going to transport ourselves into a business that is to provide local businesses 
with a pleasant place to work. So it could be one of these jazzy co-working spaces that's a bit of a split between an office, a cafe, and a kind of drop-in business center with meeting rooms, etc. I'm Martin here at the center. And what I've done, if I just zoom in, so if you just doodle in, getting an insight into what I do, in the operations area, I actually am responsible for making sure that all our clients have uh, a set of resources available to them. So if they come to me with a, a request for a resource in the room, a flip chart, a table, a layout, uh, a whiteboard, etc., that's what I'm responsible for. And I've been sent on a training course, which you are going to deliver and there are two types of training courses that you've got uh, each one different and if i've come into that training room and let's say i'm wondering a little bit i'm in that kind of mind frame as to what i'm what i'm doing there then immediately let's say i've done some work before with big picture what i might do is i might bring my representation of the business with me so what I'm giving you an insight into here is my point of perspective in the business. So I'm saying that one of the measures I judge myself is that I make sure a resource is available to people within four hours of them requesting it. I'm saying that maybe one of the challenges I've got in my job is that I've got too many sites and too many clients. So I'm feeling a little bit under pressure that to create a pleasant place for, for my clients to work if i just zoom out again remembering what the purpose of the business is i'm highlighting a challenge that i i think there are too many sites and too many clients for me to service and one of the opportunities that i've discussed previous to this training is that maybe instead of the whole process being clerical and paper driven that actually if we had some form of online request for resources, then that would be really useful and it would feel to me like a step forward. Now across the middle of the page, whilst I work within operations, you can see to the left, the business has a kind of marketing team. It has a client journey where we measure the new clients and also we want, I know that the business wants to attract returning clients. And at the bottom of the page, we've got a management and an administration team. Now, what I want to try out is here is I've been invited on two types of training. And what I'd like you to both do, if you're up for it, for a bit of fun, is that if you describe, if we'll do one and then the other. If you just describe in a nutshell what the training is that you're going to provide, what I'd like you to try and do for me is to make a connection as to why I should care that I'm getting this training. So you know a little bit about me and you don't know what each other's got. So if I go to, I'll go to Chris first. If you just say, Chris, you're maybe at the front of the room, what it is the training that you're gonna to deliver to me, and I'm glancing down at my big picture, why should I care and what connections that I might make because of the training I'm gonna get? Is that a fair request? Uh, it is. <laughs> now, I know I I've stretched anything. I've stretched you, Chris, because it's this, this this is the least exciting type of training <laughs> I could offer, and that's why I've stretched you. But go, give it a whirl. Um, well, the the training. Sorry, I can't I can't seem to get the card up in front of me. But the 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 training uh, was around health and safety, I believe. Very uh, exciting, Chris. Subject. Very exciting. Um, of but why should I care? I'm, I, I'm there. I'm thinking aloud. Why should I care, Chris, about health and safety when I've, <laughs> when I've said all I want to do is get the resources back to people within four hours? Um, I, I think there's probably two things I would focus on because it said something about relating to customer care on the card. Uh -huh. So I think there's two things. One is about keeping you safe in your job when you're getting those resources back to people uh, quickly and the methods that you use to do that, I guess. And then the second one is if you're working, I'm not sure, are you working in operations or you're working in customer care? But In operations, in the middle the of the car did yeah. mention about customer care. So oh, did it? Sorry, within the health and safety training, there might be something around how it protects your customers and make sure that we are doing things that, that keeps them safe. I mean, if I give you a hospitality example, a very a very simple one, 
that used to be a big issue in businesses like Welcome Break was allergens um, and teaching people about allergens, which people get very, well, I haven't got an allergen. Well, no, you haven't, but customers might. So, you know, it's protecting them. And one of the benefits of, you know, not uh, giving customers an allergic reaction is the fact that you don't have to deal with it and you don't get a complaint about it. (laughs) Yeah. And we don't get we don't get financial issues from people wanting to sue us for um, and, giving them and a on that, reaction. And on that point, Chris, by encouraging that connection and maybe to kind of forward mm. it on a bit, to maybe encourage me to think about the link to it returning clients, that obviously that creates yeah. a more positive environment, which maybe then links up to the purpose. The whole idea, and I know I'm biased because it's kind of my baby and I know it inside out, but the intent would be to give the learner the chance to begin to make the connection between the sometimes cold content that is being provided and my point of perspective in the business, how it helps me and the resources. Maybe, you know, more resources would be requested because Mm -hmm. people feel safer and more confident. The yeah. whole idea is here in a very small amount of time is to take the content and to flip it around as to why should I care what it means to mm-hmm. me, which I see with big picture all the time because this is the thing in front of me. I'm saying this is me. This is my point of perspective. Why should health and safety mean me to me? And with your suggestions, I think we would be closer to making those connections to make it sense to me and in terms of switching on the training room clearly you can wear fancy dress bright lights you can sing a song what we're talking about here is switching it on in in respect of make a connection between Mm -hmm. the content and the learner saying actually i get now how that could help me with one of my opportunities or i may add other opportunities or indeed challenges because it might take me a bit of time to get up to speed with health and safety, but actually when I have that knowledge, it might enable me to ensure clients feel more confident with what they use. And that, so thanks, yeah. thanks for playing yeah. along there. Yeah. And I think it depends, you know, when you're doing that as to who your delegate is and what role they do. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, one and going back into my time with, with upper crust, one of the typical things that people used to do was cut themselves because they used to use bread knives and or the wrong knife to cut bread with and literally used to cut themselves a lot. And therefore we'd have a lot of injuries to people and people taking time off. And it was, it was basically because people didn't understand how to use a knife. Hmm. Um, so it could be something as simple as that, where you're trying to get them to make that connection between, well, if you teach people properly about handling yeah. knives as an example of health and safety and the ways to do that, you'll have less time off, which if somebody's a manager or people taking time off, if somebody's a manager, that's a big thing yeah. because it, it's difficult to then run my business when my staff aren't coming in. No, that's nice. And I think that term trying to make that connection in my world, it's always best giving the people the dots to join themselves rather than telling them, because I think it engages yeah. different parts of the brain to functionally practice that connection and for them to realize and have that aha moment is much more powerful. So I'm keen, keen to, as usual, we can yeah, go sure. off left and right and up and down, but I just, yeah. I know Suzanne's got a hard stop at half past. So Suzanne, what was your training and following along the same little drill? What, what was yours? So um, mine said, I'm delivering soft skills training. Consider how it will help employees in different parts of the organization, such as dealing with the customer. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yes. So it doesn't specify what sort of soft skills training. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, yes. Uh, But I was thinking to myself, what you were saying about the finding resources within four hours, there might be opportunities or occasions when that can't happen. So giving the participants some skills to be able to work with the customers, to negotiate, to deal with complaints, then that's got to be a good thing. Interesting. And that would be in an exception uh, path kind of thing when it, uh, when it didn't happen the first time round. Yes. So actually that would be, I guess that's where challenge and opportunity are related because what, what you've done, I would, although I've noted it as a challenge, I've realized, and it, 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 it's always a movable feast. Mm. What I might do as a learner, and I should know better because I know the product is that I've immediately raised it as a, 
challenge, which is sometimes that four hour service level is pushed. But then the opportunity that comes out from that is the fact that I would then have the skills potentially to recover that position because of the soft skills. And I think we've all been in conversations where it's beautiful when the person you're talking to suggests that connection. And it, because of your prompt, I've gone challenged to opportunity. And I think the story they come out the room with is a, is a positive one. Again, mm -hmm. giving them the benefit of the doubt that, oh, I've realized I identified a challenge, which is sometimes the four hour thing, but this is now going to help me do that. And actually that might be the story they then tell their colleagues, their manager, that they now are better at that. And there's an opportunity for them to self-develop back to my related experience of there is an appetite there to self-develop. Mm. And if they've jumped on that, then that gives them a chance to do so. Do you think that's reasonable as a, a kind of, it's a really good example, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's, yes, I think, and it is an opportunity, isn't it? Because thinking about what you were saying as well about returning clients, there might be occasions when they can't deliver on what they promised, but you wouldn't want that to stop the clients from coming back. So the way that you would handle that would be the key because you're still saying, no, I can't do that. Yeah. But if you handle that in an appropriate way, then the customer's more likely to come back another time. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's right. And um, in terms of drawing a kind of line on that, I'm just trying to pick up my line. What you've said there is that that area there, is you've connected we've gone on a bit of a journey along so you've used that customer journey to kind of get that returning clients in which isn't too far from the purpose at the top in which case you'd make a connection kind of there as well so you'd kind of traverse around the big pick allowing them to make their own connections so you basically go from here up there and then kind of up there in a bit of a mess but that's the whole idea that I think that's the way we kind of think. Um, I think that's how we think about it. I don't think we think in linear text sequential. I no. think a good conversation is very much the systems thinking, connection, organic and holistic. And that's how I like to work with us. We've just traversed up and around the big pick. The big pick's just the kind of happens to be the thing in front of them. But if that helps someone who isn't particularly educated or has a background in business development they may have just done some business strategy and development without even realizing it and i think back to our responsibility i think that's a great thing for us to take responsibility for to help them and there are 10 ways to do that it just so happens i think giving people a instantly recognizable symbols on a framework that's reasonable is one way to arm them with the dots that they can then join. So we've timed out as usual, frustrated we can't go further into these topics. I'd love to give you another cue card and we just do it again. What I love about this facilitation technique, if you're willing to play along, which you are, is by prompting you, it, it yes, you can have a cup of tea and dunk your biscuit, but what it does give you is a little ponderance and a, a thunk to think about. And you've both played along with that wonderfully. And I'm sure we could go on into different directions. So um, thank you for that. So I think we'll close. If you're watching the recording, um, uh, please do get in touch. Just to remember your big pick is all about uh, engaging uh, the employee in an organization. As we've demonstrated a little bit there, we, we provide the kits, the workshops and the programs. And uh, please go to yourbigpick.com and find out more. Sign up for the next webinars that we run every two weeks. We run the events, people development and business development every two months, although they're on hold a little bit. The next one is on the 2nd of April as an online event. And it's now not in Leeds. It's an online event. So you could sign up for that on the workshops page. So Chris and Suzanne, have a lovely weekend. Don't feel so lonely that you need to... Uh, go crazy it's like get the barbecue out or oh, i don't know if you've got any uh, tactics to survive the next few days that you're willing to share oh i think we were just going we are going to go out and about but just in the countryside and stay away from people that's our tactic i mean we have a 13 year old so we've got to get her out of the house somehow she's been at home all week and she's yeah. got another who knows how many weeks so Same. Yeah, and I, we're just going to go out and got, avoid people. I think. Same barbecue, barbecue somewhere quiet. 
and Suzanne, you've got your dog to sort out, so good luck with that. Thank and you. Um, <laughs> absolute pleasure to chat to you both. Thanks for playing okay. along, and uh, we'll catch up soon. Thanks, Phil.